Hi, and welcome back to Unlock Your Bible, the show where the Bible is taught in a plain and clear way for all to understand. My name is Ron Knight. I'm your Bible teacher. So I ask that you go get your King James Bible, your pen and paper, and join us for our study in the book of Galatians. My friend, for the past few weeks, we've been going through Galatians chapter 3. We've worked our way through the book showing the difference between God's law to Israel and his grace message to us today. You know, my friend, there's a difference between what God was doing in the Bible in time past, what he's doing today, and what he will do in the future. You know, if you're not studying your Bible dispensationally, if you're not rightly dividing the word of truth as Paul commands in 2 Timothy 2.15, you're, you're not going to understand your Bible. So if you want to understand your Bible clearly as God has laid it out, know that it's, it's, it's broken up in three parts. Time past is the past, but now is the present, the ages to come is the future. Now, when you're studying in your Bible the books of Genesis through Acts, you're in time past. And the characteristics of time past Bible study is this. It's Moses and the prophets. It's God speaking through Moses and the prophets to the nation of Israel. It has to do with the law of God, the, 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 the commands that God gave Moses in the book of Exodus. It has to do with God's prophecy program, that which was spoken since the world began by all, all of God's holy prophets of Israel. And it has one goal in mind, the earthly kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. But today, in the but now, in order to understand what God is doing today, because there was a change in Acts chapter 9, Israel killed the Messiah, the, their Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. And instead of doing what God created them to do is to take his word and be blessed by it and then bless all the other nations to be a kingdom of priests, they decided they didn't want the word of God, so they killed their Messiah. Well, when he was raised from the dead, he, he went up to the highest heaven with the Father, and God the Father sent him back in Acts chapter 9 to save the Apostle Paul, a man named Saul of Tarsus. Today in Romans through Philemon, we receive what God has for us today. The books of Romans through Philemon, 13 books of your Bible, were written by the Apostle Paul. He's our Apostle. He's your Apostle. He speaks to us Gentile nations. The word nations and Gentile are synonymous. Gentiles means nations. God has a program not to the nation of Israel only like time passed, but all nations. Today, God is not dispensing law like he did with Israel. He's dispensing grace. We live in the dispensation of the grace of God. God calls this message about Jesus Christ, his son, the revelation of the mystery, Romans 16, 25. And instead of dealing with an earthly kingdom, like with Israel, God is dealing with a heavenly kingdom. The body of Christ, the term exclusive to Paul's epistles, when you trust Jesus Christ, you become a member of the body of Christ. We have a calling in heaven, and we'll see that as we go along. Then once the rapture of the church, the body of Christ, where we go home to be in heaven with the Lord, God is going to continue his program with the nation of Israel in the ages to come, the future. The books of your Bible, which lays out that doctrine, are the books of Hebrews through Revelation. It is written by the Jewish apostles, and it is exclusively, again, to the nation of Israel. This time it talks about the law of God, but the law that he will put in their hearts, according to the new covenant. It's again prophecy. It's something that's been spoken about by all of God's holy prophets since the world began. And again, it will culminate in the earthly kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. But today we're in Galatians 3, and it's a book written by the Apostle Paul. That's our doctrine for today. So let's look at it. Galatians chapter 3, and let's look at verse 11. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. In our last session, my friend, we saw that the law was not of faith. When God gave that law, he gave it to show Israel that they were sinners. In fact, when you try to keep that law for righteousness today, it says it makes faith void. The only thing that faith can operate in today is the grace message. God gave this message to be believed. God is not having men please him by keeping the Ten Commandments. God is not trying to operate that program today. That's a time past program. Today, God is operating under a grace message, and you learn about that in Paul's epistles, Romans through Philemon. And Galatians is one of them. And Galatians is, is teaching us that we're not to use legalism to please God. That we're not to use law keeping to please God. That it's by God's grace, okay? Look at verse 12. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. We saw last time that it has to do with eternal life. 
in Matthew chapter 19. The, the rich young ruler asked the Lord Jesus Christ, he says, Lord, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Well, in that program, it was to go into that earthly kingdom. No Jew in time past looked to go to heaven the way you and I do when we trust the Lord. See, my friend, when you trust Christ that he died on the cross for your sins and was buried and rose again the third day, if you trust him that he paid for your sins, when you die, you're going to heaven. But no Jew looked to go to heaven in time past. You know that? Nobody before the Apostle Paul ever looked to go to heaven when they died. What a Jewish man looked to do when he died was to be buried and resurrected at that last day into that kingdom. Okay? Jesus Christ is going to come back and resurrect the nation of Israel. Some to eternal damnation, some to eternal life. Those when, when he, let's go over here. And it's coming. When Christ comes back to the, to the world, he's going to come back. He's coming back for the nation of Israel. He's coming back here for the body of Christ at the end of our dispensation. But later, to complete his program with Israel, he's coming back for them. When he does come back, he's going to resurrect the believing Israel from time past. Everybody before the Apostle Paul who believed God's word in time past, believed on Jesus Christ during his earthly ministry, they're dead, aren't they? But one day, God is going to resurrect them into his earthly kingdom. Then a thousand year kingdom will take place and at the end of that at the great white throne all unbelievers will be resurrected, judged, and thrown into the lake of fire. Now my friend, you don't want to be a part of that, do you? You don't want to be part of the lake of fire. Well today God has a message of grace. He says if you believe his son Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay for your sins, you won't go to hell. You'll go to heaven. Now that's our calling. Today we're not looking to be resurrected into an earthly kingdom like Israel. We're looking to, 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 when we die, to go to be with the Lord in heaven. And one day we're all going to work for him in heaven as the body of Christ. Okay? That's our calling. It's different from Israel. Israel's going to rule the earth for Jesus Christ. The body of Christ will rule the heavens, the positions of rank and authority up there. The same positions of authority you see down here, governors and mayors and kings and queens. Well, God has those positions of rank and authority up there. And we, the body of Christ, those who trusted Christ, will fill those positions that used to be held by Satan and his angels. They're going to be kicked out of those and thrown into the lake of fire. And we're going to take over, okay? That's what God is doing. Now, look what Paul says in verse 13. Because no man can keep the law. Remember, we saw last session that the law is good, but see, we're sinners. We can't keep the law because we're not perfect. But somebody was. Jesus Christ was perfect, wasn't he? Now look what he says in verse 13. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. How did he do that? <clears throat> did God just sweep sin under the rug? You know, when you, you sweep your floor and you just sweep it right under the rug? No, no, no. God is just and holy and righteous, isn't he? God dealt with sin at Calvary. He didn't sweep it under the rug. You know what God did? He put, he put your sin on his own son. You know, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21, God made his own son to be sin for you, that you could be made the righteousness of God in him when you trust him. Isn't that the great exchange? That's beautiful what God has done. See, Christ, verse 13, Galatians 3, 13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. How? Being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on the tr a tree. You see, my friend, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. We saw in last session that James, the book of James chapter 2 verse 10, James says that if a man keeps the whole law and yet offend in one point, he's guilty of all. You can be perfect your whole life, my friend. No, you can't. But if you could and you committed one sin, one evil thought, one wrong thought, one unrighteous something, if you're not perfect, God has to condemn you. Well, my friend, in God's grace, he decided that he's not going to, he doesn't will that men go to hell. And he's made provision for you not to go to hell. He sent his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to die for you. See what he says? Christ hath redeemed us. You know what redemption means? It means to buy back. You owe God a debt if you trusted Christ. You, you used to. My friend, if, if, if you're not sure where you're going to spend eternity, can I tell you? The Bible says you owe God a debt. You, you, have, sin in your, you have sin and you owe God a debt. And the way, where you're going to pay for it is hell. That's what he created hell for, to send people who desire to be part of Satan's program. He didn't create hell for man. 
created for the devil and his angels, but men who, who, who side with Satan and reject the Lord Jesus Christ, that's where God sends them. You know what? But Christ paid your price. He paid the ransom. You know what a ransom is. You know, somebody who has a lot of money, they go and they, they kidnap one of their children. And they won't give the child back until they pay a hefty ransom, right? And if they don't pay the money, they're going to kill the child. So the parent can't have that. They pay the price. Well, God loves you so much, so much that his own son paid the price. Isn't that wonderful? You owe God a debt for your sins, and Jesus Christ paid your sin debt. Now, why don't you trust him? That's redemption, okay? Um, look at Galatians chapter 4, verse 4. Galatians chapter 4, look at verse 4. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Now we're going to get into this verse when we get to chapter 4, but let me, let me show you. In verse 4 he says, but when the fullness of time was come, God sent his son on a schedule. When Jesus Christ of Nazareth showed up in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in your Bible, he was on a time schedule from God. He came at the exact moment. All those prophecies that spoke of him, only one man could fulfill that, Jesus Christ. He came on a time schedule. Look what he says. God sent forth his son made of a woman. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ, he, he was born of the Virgin Mary. There was a, a virgin named Mary in the nation of Israel, whom God says that if she believed, this is what he's going to do. God sent forth his son through Mary. You know, the sin nature comes through the man. Jesus Christ didn't have a sin nature. Jesus Christ was God incarnate. He didn't have a physical father on the earth. In Genesis 3.15, God promised that the seed of the woman would be the redeemer. Well, that's Jesus Christ. And he showed up right on time. And we have the record of that in, in, in Matthew through John. But look what else he says. Made of a woman made under the law. My friend, when Jesus Christ came, he said, think not that I come to destroy the law. I come to fulfill it. The Lord Jesus Christ was made under the law. He operated under the Old Testament. Hebrews says that a testament, a new, the New Testament cannot be enforced until after the death of the testator. It has to be enforced with the blood, the death. Well, Jesus Christ, during his earthly ministry, operated under the law. You understand, that's why Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is not doctrine for you today. If you go back in Matthew and the Sermon on the Mount and try to live by that, that's not for you. That's Old Testament ground. That was before the cross work of Christ. No, my friend, today, the doctrine that God has laid out in his Bible for your obedience, obedience of faith, is the grace message and, which was given by the Apostle Paul. You find your doctrine, your walk, in Romans through Philemon. No, the, the Lord Jesus was under the law. And look what else it says. Verse 5. To do what? To redeem them that were under the law. That's Israel. Jesus Christ came to redeem the nation of Israel. But by doing so, in essence, and we learn this through the Apostle Paul, he redeemed the world. See, Israel was God's chosen. They were a representative of all mankind. God chose one nation to deal with, and they would be an example to all other nations. You understand what God told Abraham? In Genesis 12, God says to Abraham, <coughs> That, that I will bless you and make you a blessing. And through you and your seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Israel, even back here, was supposed to be blessed and then take the blessing to the nations. God always intended to save Gentiles. It's just that in time past, he was going to do it through the rise of Israel. The mystery of Christ says that it's through the fall of Israel that salvation is going to the Gentiles. And by Christ redeeming the nation of Israel... What happened, what he did that at Calvary when he shed his blood, okay? We find out from the Apostle Paul that, look at this, verse 5, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Us Gentiles, we are able to profit by the cross work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now watch the difference. Right here, we're already the sons of God as Gentiles when we trust Christ. Israel, the nation of Israel, they won't attain that sonship status into the kingdom. They're still children. They're the children of Israel. That's why the Bible calls them the children of Israel. We have a wonderful status in the dispensation of grace. God sees us as full-grown sons in Christ. That's why he doesn't put us under the law. See, adults, 
Righteous adults don't need a law. Paul says the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless. And because we're not in the law, we're not under the law, we're under grace. Paul says, Romans 6, 14. We're adults in Christ, so God is putting us under tutors and governors. He's given us sound doctrine to live our lives by, to allow Christ to build his life in us. We're not under the law. Law is made for those young children of Israel, okay? But we're adult sons. We're, we have the adoption of sons. God sees you when you trust his son as a full-grown adult. Isn't that wonderful? And the grace message, it, it allows you to make grown-up decisions on giving your life to the Lord. If you're a believer today, if you trust that Jesus Christ is your Savior, Paul says, to, he, he beseeches you by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, right? Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. That's an adult sonship status decision, okay? So God is not putting mankind who trusts his son under the law today. Now, look at verse 5, Galatians 4, verse 5. Christ, God sent his son to redeem them that were under the law, that's Israel, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Like I said, when we get to these verses, my friend, in the next few sessions, we'll talk more about it. It's a wonderful thing that God has done by the cross work of the Lord. But I just want you to see that when we talk about redemption, redemption is to buy back out of slavery. Uh, let's go, with, go to Ephesians chapter 1, if you will. Go to Ephesians chapter 1. And when we talk about the grace of God, I want to show you some things that we have that Israel didn't have. You know, my friend, Israel won't ultimately get their atonement. <clears throat> their day of atonement will happen here in the kingdom. But our Apostle Paul says that when we trust the shed blood of Christ today, when we believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins, we have the atonement, forgiveness of sins. Watch this. Ephesians 1, look at verse 7. Ephesians 1, verse 7. Paul says, In whom, talking about Christ, we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of, I'm sorry, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his what? Grace. My friend, in one verse, this shows the, the mercy, grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at this. We have redemption. He bought us out of slavery through his blood. You know, Jesus Christ shed his blood on Calvary's cross. That's, that's how you get your sins forgiven, by trusting his shed blood. Look what he says. The forgiveness of sins according to what? According to your works? No. According to the riches of his grace. You see, my friend, God has a dispense grace today. It's the dispensation of grace. And God, in his riches of his grace, he desires that you be saved. The Bible says God wills that all men be saved and come unto a knowledge of the truth. Today in the dispensation of grace, God is not angry at you, my friend. You know, the Lord says grace and peace from, from, from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Today is the day of salvation, my friend. If, if you don't know for sure where you're going to spend eternity, why don't you trust the grace of God? Believe that Christ shed his blood to pay for your sins. Look what the verse says. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. My friend, if you want forgiveness for all your sins, past, present, and future, it's in the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why don't you believe that? It's according to the riches of his grace. Go with me, if you will, to... Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. There's a beautiful verse about atonement in Romans chapter 5. Atonement. When you think of that word at, atonement, think of it's at one minute. You're at one with God when you trust him. Romans chapter 5, and look at verse 11. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom, by Christ, we have, now what that next word, now receive the atonement. You see, my friend, Israel as a nation, they're waiting to receive atonement when they're going to be one with God that's going to be in the kingdom. But when you trust the shed blood of Christ, it, Paul says you today, right now, now we receive the atonement, okay? Go to Colossians chapter 1, if you will. Colossians chapter 1. And let's look at verse 14. Now, my friend, I use the King James Bible for this reason. Because the verse I'm going to take you to Colossians 1.14, we're going to read it together. Now, your version may have an error in it, and, and this verse will be a test for you. Now, I'm going to read it the way God intended it to read. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 14, it says, In whom, speaking of Christ, we have redemption through his blood, 
even the forgiveness of sins. Now, my Bible says through his blood, just like the other passage. That's why I took you to both. Does your Bible say through his blood? Or does your version take out the blood of Christ? If your version took out the blood of Christ, you have a corrupted version of the Bible. My friend, the King James Bible is the only perfect, inerrant Bible for the English-speaking people. And if, if your version doesn't have blood in verse 14, you have the wrong version. See that? Satan wants to corrupt the Word of God. But you, if you speak English, the King James Bible is the trustworthy Bible. Go with me to 1 Timothy chapter 2, if you will. 1 Timothy chapter 2. And let's look at verse 5. 1 Timothy 2, verse 5. Some beautiful passages about our Lord, His redemptive work at Calvary. In 1 Timothy 2, verse 5, Paul writes, For there is one God, and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. See that, my friend? There is one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. God became a man here in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the one mediator. You understand, you don't have to go to a man to confess your sins today. No. Because the man Christ Jesus paid for your sins. You don't have to. There's one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. It's not a human being here on earth. Guess what? This is why. Verse 6. Who gave himself a ransom for who? For all. To be testified in due time. You see, my friend, Jesus Christ, according to what was given to the Apostle Paul, and in the context, that's what he's talking about. This grace message says that that one mediator between God and man is Christ Jesus. And he shed his blood for all men. Now, my friend, it says to be testified in due time. Because there was a time back here where Jesus Christ didn't shed his blood just for all men. He didn't come as a ransom for all men. That's the grace of God. That's the mystery of Christ. Go with me, if you will, to Matthew chapter 20, if you will. Because, my friend, in order to rightly divide the word of truth, you need to understand that when Jesus Christ came... He came for the nation of Israel. God in his grace has given his son to the Gentiles. Okay? That's the mystery. Paul says that through the mystery of Christ, he gave himself a ransom for all. But watch what the Lord says during his earthly ministry as, an Isra as, as Israel's Messiah. In Matthew 20, look at verse 28. Matthew 20, verse 28, the Lord says, Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered to unto, but to minister, and to give his life a ransom for what? Many. Now, my friend, in one passage it says Jesus Christ gave his, 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 his life for all. Here he says in his own words, for many. Now, which one is right? Both are in the scriptures, right? Right? Here it's in the red letters in my Bible, so it was Christ, right? So he says many. Well, there's a difference between many and all. So how do we deal with that? Well, when you rightly divide the word of truth and you understand that the book of Matthew is right here in between Genesis and Acts. It was written to the nation of Israel. When, when Christ said that, he was speaking about that nation. We learn through the Apostle Paul in the mystery that what Christ ultimately accomplished at Calvary was that he gave himself a ransom for all men. You see that? See the beautiful thing about God's grace? There it was only for Israel. Today it's for all men. Okay? He was a limited atonement. Now it's atonement for all. Now, go back, if you will, to Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. So you see, my friend, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. And the way he did it was by becoming a curse for us. Because cursed is anyone, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. You know, my friend, he says, a, he became a curse for us. You know, that's that word mercy seat. That, that, that has to do with that mercy seat. That, he's, the, he's the mercy seat. If you want God's grace and mercy, you need to run to the mercy seat. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the mercy seat. It's where you find God's mercy. Jesus Christ paid for your sin debt. He paid the price. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ is the only answer for man's sin. You know, Calvary is the only thing that's going to stop sin, my friend. I don't care how much counseling you get, it won't work. How much you try to just reform yourself through 12-step programs and things, they don't work. The only answer for sin, my friend, is the Lord Jesus Christ and his work at Calvary. If you're tired of sin, 
He's the answer. And if you're a believer today and you're caught up in sin and you, you, you desire to please the Lord, but you just can't, you don't have the power to, his, his cross work is the answer too. You know, when Christ died for your sins, he died for your sins. To put sin away, he died so that sin doesn't have dominion over you. He died so that sin won't master you anymore. Believe that. Believe you're dead to sin. Read Romans chapter 6. So look at verse 13. Galatians 3 verse 13. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. That's a quote from Deut Deuteronomy. It says that when a young man became too much for his parents to handle, his mother and father would take him down to the judges in Israel, the, the heads of the, the nation, and tell them, our son is a rebellious son. And they would take him, and they would stone him. And then they'd hang him on a tree as an example to other young men in Israel who didn't obey their parents. You see, and when they looked at that boy on the hung on a tree, it was a curse. Well, you understand the symbolism. Jesus Christ became that curse. He took all of our rebellion. He took your rebellion, God. He paid your sin debt. You know, my friend, we're coming down to the end of our study, and we'll get more into that propitiation, that mercy seat, that, that, that him, him being the, the one who, who redeemed you, that ransom. But let me ask you, has anyone ever loved you enough to, to even ask you, if you were to die today, do you know for sure where you'd spend eternity? You know, my friend, God loves you, and he demonstrated it. You know, Romans 5, verse 8 says that God showed, he demonstrated, he commended his love toward us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You know, my friend, the Lord Jesus Christ is the only answer for you. And when you're in him, you have all of God's best. You have God's mercy, you have his grace, you have his forgiveness, you have his life. If you've never trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, why don't you do that now? Once you, once you believe right now that in your heart, don't move a muscle, don't go anywhere. You don't have to do any ordinances. You don't have to do any works. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, that he was buried and that he rose again the third day. And if you're a believer today, if you're someone who trusted the Lord Jesus Christ already, and you're tired of the religious system, the book of Galatians is for you. I want you to join us in these studies. But, but if you're attending a church that doesn't rightly divide the word of truth, doesn't teach the Bible as past, present, and future, and doesn't break it down, Genesis through Acts, Romans through Philemon, and Hebrews through Revelation, you're not doing yourself a, a, a service. You're doing yourself a disservice. You need to come, give me a call. I'm Ron Knight. Here's my phone number, unlockyourbible.com. You can get free materials on the Grace Message and Right Division. You can join us. We're in Roseville, Minnesota. You can find that info. Give me a call and, and learn more about it. Because, my friend, if, if, you're, if you're a believer today and you still don't rightly divide the word of truth, the grace of God won't operate in your life. You'll have no power to live in the grace message the way God intended for you to live. Your Christian life will go up and down. You'll be up one day and down the next and confused. The Bible won't make sense. You'll be over here or over here. No, my friend, God has a plan. The Bible does make sense if you rightly divide it. So again, my friend, we come to the end of our study. So don't hesitate to call us. Let us know you're out there. Get free material. Join us for our studies. We're right here in the Twin Cities. You can join us each week. But until next week, I'm Ron Knight saying, may the grace of our Lord be with you all. Amen.